All right. And closing the door, looks like you're all trapped now. This is going to work very well. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming along to my presentation, which is about transitioning to GovCMS, as you've seen for quite a few minutes. I'm Glenn Martin, I'm from the Department of Finance in Canberra. And um, today I'm going to be talking about GovCMS and the GovCMS program, and for agencies and vendors alike, the things that you need to take into account when you're looking um, to moving to GovCMS. So it's an open source Drupal distribution uh, built on Drupal 7. And when we use it um, with Acquia, with uh, Acquia Cloud Site Factor or Acquia Cloud Enterprise, we have a whole of government security assessed, open source, cloud, etc., solution for government agencies at any level. So we have uh, federal, state and local government um, that are on GovCMS. All good. Um, and to, you'll need to forgive me sometimes, I'll lapse into a bit of government speak. So a government entity, just so you know, some government websites are really obvious that they're government, finance.gov.au, okay? Um, but government also runs a lot of campaigns and, and other sorts of websites which at first blush might not be appear that they're government. Also educational institutions uh, and similar sorts of things. So it's not just, just for government. To give you a quick bit of context about this transitioning to GovCMS, um, this is where you're going to use a GovCMS distribution in our hosting environment um, is what I'm going to be talking about, the differences today. If you took the distribution to use on your own hosting, you can do whatever you want with it, just like in any other distro. Um, you're, there's no restrictions. It's, it's not a freemium setup where we've put out there like the cut down restricted bits and then you've got to pay more to get the whole lot. Um, full distro is available. It is on Drupal.org and GitHub, um, all out there in the open. We do our issues queues um, in GitHub, so that's if you want to get involved and see what's going on, um, definitely go to there, see the conversations that, um, that are being had through both government agencies, vendors, and just interested citizens, basically, um, getting right into the community. Get in there, get involved, get a part of it. Um, we're, we're seeing some really, really interesting things coming out of it. The quick history is we actually went live in Drupal South Melbourne last year, like last April, is uh, when, when I stood up with Adam Malone, um, the sharp-dressed man you might have seen from this morning, um, and I uh, spoke about it. We have two hosting environments. We have our software as a service, our SaaS, and our platform as a service, our PaaS environment, uh, which I'll be describing a bit more. We have 105 sites. Uh, in the GovCMS program that are live today. There's 28 in development as we speak. We have 49 government agencies that have signed up to be part of the program. In the next month, month and a half, we have about 10, 10 sites um, that are in various states of development that are planning to go live. Um, so where I say at the moment our SaaS environment is serving up 3 million page views a month um, across the sites that are over there, um, that's going to grow dramatically and real soon. Um, and the caveat there, it's possible um, since I wrote this up yesterday, um, somebody has either gone live or signed up or uh, started development since then. I'm actually getting a nod from the big boss, so um, it is that busy. We, we have that much interest in it. So as far as the environment that you should use, um, it's, it's deciding between the SAS or the PASS is, is what it comes down to. When agencies are in the SAS environment, it's, it's a shared code base, but it's one that is supported um, by the program. So the case of you having to uh, apply security, security patches, module updates, et cetera, uh, where an agency doesn't want to do that, doesn't have the skill, doesn't have the money, doesn't have the inclination, we look after it. Uh, you get CDN, DDoS, WAF, Web Application Firewall, all by default, it's always on. We know agencies prior to uh, GovCMS coming into being, they were paying $100,000 for CDN and DDoS alone. So forget the website, forget anything else. They haven't done anything except put some protection in front of it. Um, and it's all sitting on Acquia Cloud Site Factory, um, which is hosted by Amazon Web Services. Um, the PaaS environment, the requirement there, it must be Drupal 
we do prefer the GovCMS distribution, but uh, for various reasons. As long as it's Drupal, that's okay. We have security accredited up to the infrastructure layer, uh, and as you can see in the SAS, we've actually accredited to the infrastructure and application. For a government agency, this represents months and months of effort um, in saving and a lot of money as well um, that we've gone and done this and, and hang finance's name on it. Um, the PASS environment is sitting out on Acquia Cloud Enterprise. Uh, so it's, it, it is different um, and it does allow agencies that want to be out on their own, looking after themselves, air-gapped from, from other sites to be able to do that. The SAS versus PASS for both administrators and developers in our SAS environment, there's no user one. You don't have administrator access. Uh, you can't install a module on a whim. Um, you, you have access to, when I say there that you can configure limited modules, there's a couple of hundred that make up the GovCMS distribution. Um, of that, we allow you to access some of them, but some we don't. So the security complexity, the password complexity module, you're sitting there and you're thinking 13 characters, this is a real pain, I, I want to turn that off. Well, you can't, because there goes our security accreditation if we let you do that. Um, but you do have access to other things. So the uh, Google Analytics, you can drop your, your Google snippets into that and, and self-serve some areas. Uh, you don't have to worry about the distribution maintenance. You don't have to worry about doing a sec security assessment unless you want to. So some agencies have come to us and said, we still want a pen test, we still want to do a full security assessment, and that's, and that's fine. Uh, for the others that don't want to blow six months of their life, um, they, they can use the assessment that, that we've already put on it. In the past, you do have full admin and full code, um, code base access. So you can do whatever you want, uh, essentially. You can install any modules, uh, but you are responsible for maintaining it. You want to drop that module in, you better test it first, because if you put that in, you turn it on, you white page your site, uh, you broke it, you're going to have to fix it or find somebody to help, help you fix it. So this is where in a SaaS environment, it's an element of protecting an agency from itself um, because they, they'll often get, get the command from on high, we want the latest Twitter widget, just make it happen. Um, you just can't do it there because uh, we're, we're protecting the, the environment for all the other websites that are there. Even though I talk about that there's no admin in SAS and you can't just drop in a module, and it's not to say, by the way, that you can't actually ever get a module that, that you want, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. There's still so much you can do. So I'm talking to a room full of Drupal people. You know through the admin console, as far as content um, displaying and being dynamic, fields, views, blocks, filters, panels, content types, you still have access to all of those things. You, you can still do all of those normal um, administrative uh, Drupal level types that, that you've had in the past. Um, it just means you need to know some good Drupal site building, right? Um, the SAS, because of that, does mean that it is still good for complex sites. We, we have some little myths that go around that, oh, GovCMS, SAS, it's only for really basic stuff. Um, it, it's not. We've got some very, really complex sites in their Department of Communications, for example, communications.gov.au. The things that they've got going on in the back end um, is, is really impressive. So check out the site if, uh, if, if you are interested. Um, but it does help out an agency that has got low, no good Drupal skills or they don't want to look after a distribution. They don't want to have a dev team and a security team and a testing team to look after that. Um, and it also comes with the benefit that anything that we put into the GovCMS distribution, um, its functionality applies to everybody in the SaaS environment. Now, they might not want it, um, but it, it is still there and it goes in there at no cost to them. Um, not so great for uh, if you do have an explicit module or explicit functionality but our distribution cannot serve. Uh, for agencies that love a good tinker, and we, we know who they are, and, and sites that are really experimental, so where um, you, you're sort of pushing the boundaries of what you might be able to do. As far as pricing goes, that's large enough. Before I, I bring it up, the, the hosting price, um, don't think of it as just hosting. So where, where an agency comes on board with this, 
you get the Amazon Web Services. It's two data centres in Australia, in, in Sydney, so you, you've got your, um, uh, your cross-border jurisdi jurisdiction there. We've got a 99.95% .95 uptime SLA. It's IRAP assessed. It means that it's been independently assessed. Um, up to the application to unclassified. So it's GovCMS is all for uh, public facing websites. Uh, we don't throw any wall gardens around um, our, our SAS sites. Managed code base, CDN, uh, et cetera, always HTTPS, always on, scalable. There's a link for the pricing, and very briefly, if that's even visible, you see. We do our hosting pricing on page views for sites, so we do start at very small sites um, where, yeah, 5,000 page views a month, up to 2 million page views a month, and then we have custom plans beyond that because we have some big agencies coming in. The pass, again, complex sites uh, needing strong CMS. It's, it's exactly the same but it's for agencies with high Drupal dev skills or access to, and usually access to means cost, okay? So it's having the budget to do it. Um, Drupal sites that are not already on the GovCMS distribution, but you, you need to move hosting for some reason, um, and, and those, those other points there, but it's not good for reducing resourcing and costs. It's not good for sites that are light touch, so one, ones at once they're up and running that you don't really need to, um, sort of keep using again, and especially low, um, low volume ones. And, uh, and agencies that have limited Drupal and limited access to Drupal skills, uh, it's not great for, because you really do have to look after yourself um, or be able to get someone to do it. As far as those development options for, for bringing a site over, um, you, you, you've got the two ends of a scale, okay? so you. Either do all the development internally, if, if the agency has got it, or you outsource the development. Uh, for government agencies, they can go to a limited tender, open tender, um, depending on the value of the contract. I'm not going to get into procurement here. Um, and we're also setting up a panel. And so we're, we're really excited about this, that we're, we've been wanting to do a panel for quite some time. And if you're not familiar with what panels are in government, procurement in government can be really painful. There's lots and lots and lots of rules we have to follow. And as an agency, it's very hard for us in the GovCMS program to recommend a vendor. So if an agency comes to us and says, oh, who, who can we get to build our, our Drupal site? Our, our answer is, well, you'll have to go to market. You'll have to do an RFR, an RFT, um, go out, lose a lot of months of your life doing that sometimes. Um, so. A panel, though, is where we will open up the doors to have vendors apply to be on the panel. There will be set criteria for what you need to do to be on that panel. Um, and then when an agency comes along, they will be able to, as an option, they don't have to, use a panel uh, to, to potentially select a vendor because there's been a pre-vetting process that's, that's happened. It's not set up yet. We're hoping um, we've started the wheels in motion. Hopefully, uh, early next year we'll have that going. If you're interested, keep an eye on us on, on Twitter, uh, on our GovCMS website. Uh, send us an email and, and, and we can alert you as well. Um, so, but other than the panel, the somewhere in between is for an agency to skill themselves up. So, that's to bring in an external vendor. With, with the remit to take a, an existing site that you want to migrate over, um, and this is an agency that might have technical skill, but just not Drupal technical skill, and they can be taken along on a journey to help self-serve themselves and, and learn more Drupal and be able to stand up more sites. Any questions, by the way? You can actually yell at me if you really want to, um, but uh, yeah, don't don't hesitate to ask questions along the way. And there's no. Questions. Okay, um, so four four big factors to consider um, when when you're looking at coming across, and it's like, okay, do I do I want to go SAS or do I want to go PASS? And I'll, I'll come into some small case studies here. Um, so the first one is considerations about internal capability and inclination. Uh, it's it's really important. So. The boss says, yeah, I've heard this open source, let's go cloud, sounds awesome, and I, and I want you to do it now, but the web team is quite literally a half-timer, 
and that's, that's all they are. Who is able to go out and do an evaluation, do the security assessments and do all of the things that that government agency really should with this? Um, or separately, okay, so the decision's made to go open source, this is great. Um, and you're thinking, we don't want to outsource the support, so you go to your internal ICT, say, hey guys, we want to go to open source and, and be on Drupal and it's going to be awesome, can you help us? And basically, this is your answer. Um, so that happens a lot. I love the ICT teams within government. Um, some of my best friends work in ICT. Uh, but yeah, when you come up against that, that can be a problem. So, um, and the last one, you, you, wanna, you want to migrate. You want to get off the ailing internal infrastructure or an external bad contract. Um, but yeah, who wants to burn six months of their life um, doing all the research? Those things above, that's where SAS starts looking pretty good. Um, and the case study is Asada. Asada was our first customer um, that went live on, on the system last year. They are the 0.5 full-time employee. Uh, so uh, Nick, who, who was there at the time, never going to be able to do it. Small budget, no in-house ability. Um, so we've stood up the Asada site. Um, and ever since, even with that small team, one, once it was up there and running, um, they've been happy ever since. All the maintenance, all the security, all the updates is all taken care for them. Um, and it's been really good. Inclination. So this is the ATO's annual report. ATO are full stack Drupal. Uh, these guys are hardcore what, what they're up to. Um, but an annual report, once an annual report is published, that even the content you don't touch again because it's, it's the annual Port, right? Um, but you don't want to maintain it. You don't want to update this, what is now essentially a static site. So the ATO chose to put their annual report into our SAS environment um, because we're going to maintain the distribution. Second consideration is, does our distribution meet the required functionality? So um, maybe you've got an existing Drupal site already um, that you want to bring over, but it's too, too bespoke. Um, too, there's too many modules in there, it's, it's existed for 10 years and it's had the functionality creep and there's no way you're going to be able to migrate it across. Or maybe the ICT area is on board, but they demand control. They, they don't want anybody else looking after it. Um, or there are modules that are drop-dead requirements. Um, pass could be a, a, a suitable choice there. An example is Cancer Australia. So Cancer Australia um, came across to us uh, very recently. Uh, they already had extensive Drupal holdings, so had quite, quite a number of sites, and they needed new hosting. No way that they were going to be able to migrate their sites over to the GovCMS distribution, but they were already on Drupal, so we were able to put them into the PASS environment. And we're actually able to put them in quite quickly too, which, which was good. Timing. So agencies have a habit of coming to us pretty darn late. Um, so the thing's nine-tenths of the way there, and then they contact us, and we have a look at what's been done. It's like, oh, you know what, guys? You've, you've really gone off reserve, and we, we can't bring you into our, our SaaS environment. Or maybe there's an emergency migration. Uh, bad contract coming to an end. Site's been hacked. We've, we've actually had a few customers come over where the previous environment, security just not up to scratch. Um, or there is a module requirement that we know we're going to put in our distribution, but it's not actually there as yet. So we can actually have agencies that start their life in pass um, and then move over to SAS an appropriate time. The example I have here is budget.vic.gov.au. Hey, Jitma. Jitma, you're on your phone. Give him a nudge. <laughs> there he is. It's your site. Um, so we had, um, we had a hard deadline, so the budget doesn't get pushed back because the site's not ready, right? Uh, you, you don't go to the, the state treasurer to say, sorry, you, you, can you delay a few days? Everything was ready to be for SAS except for the fact that we didn't have the services module in the distribution, but we knew it was coming. So we launched the budget site on the PASS environment. Once we put the services module in, into the GovCMS distribution, we have now forklifted them over to SAS. You see my little uh, mention at the bottom there. The Victorian budget 
and Department of Environment, Federal Department of Environment, actually co-developed on a CCAN module, uh, which was really exciting. This is a module that allows the websites to pull data from um, data sources such as data.gov.au. Um, Department of Environment had started doing it, got along to, to a point, and uh, budget.vic came along and it's like, hey, we want to be able to, to pull some data in and visualise it with pretty graphs and tables, etc. Um, so we quite genuinely had a federal and state government collaboration on module functionality, um, which is now folded into the distribution that anybody else now has access to. Um, so that, that was really, really great for us. The budget consideration. So you got all of the capability, but none, none of the money. Um, Got to remember, with the SAS, including out of the box, fully maintained, CDN, DDoS and, and all of the costs there, directly benefiting from any enhancements that we do, um, this really works with, with, a, with a budget constrained department. The PASS does genuinely have that greater flexibility, there is no question about it, but your, your cost of entry is much higher. Um, especially for sites that run under 120,000 page views a month. So this is based on our, our, meet, our small plan in the SAS pricing. Um, it is up to an agency really to decide. Uh, so if you have a 5,000 page views a month site, we've got a perfect SAS plan. But if you really want to go over to a pass and have all of the overhead for what is really a, a niche audience site, I mean, less than 5,000 page views, you probably generating most of your traffic out of your own department looking at yourself anyway. Um, but it's up to an agency to do that. But when you're looking at budget and you're thinking about the two, never forget 80-20. I love 80-20. I live my life by this. We always receive arguments about the SAS um, environment. Oh, but I don't have full control. It's my website, but I don't have full control. I'm at the whim of somebody else, that you guys are going to make decisions that are directly going to affect me. Um, I mean, we, we don't do this. Our site is unique. We, I, I, SAS sounds great, but we're really special with your informational brochureware website. That's special. Um, so I've heard all of them. I, I really have. So, but, you know, what, what if you could get across to an agency that GovCMS SAS in particular will get you 80% of the way to the idea of perfection of, of a site that has nothing wrong with it and all the functionality that you want for 20% of the effort. Okay, you can stand these things up quickly and simply in very little time. It's only when you sort of flip and we've got, we've got our site now, but now we want the widget and the widget takes as long to do as the whole site it was itself. The reduced effort means reduced cost and time to launch. Yeah, okay. You all know this, so this actually isn't that revolutionary, but countless times we come up against agencies um, that they see the value proposition that is over in the SaaS environment. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, and, but they're still like, oh, but we, we're still special. We're, and no, you, you're actually not that special. Um, I mean, special to us, but um, at the end of the day, the SAS of the pass, it's not an either or. So agencies can have both, and we do have agencies. So ATO, I mentioned already, they've got their annual report over in the SAS site, but in the past, they've got some complex sites going on. Uh, so you can have both. Um, Use the SAS for sites that you finished development and you're not really beyond your BAU running of it um, and not really going to change anymore. Use the PASS for the constantly moving, the things that, that you want to be putting those modules in, pushing the boundaries. Um, you can do that. The quick little wrap-up is kind of getting to the end because I just want to show you some themes real quick. When you're doing a migration or a transition, don't try to match your existing whatever. So that whatever might be your publishing workflow that has six layers of approval in it that nobody can actually remember why you have six layers of approval anymore, but that's how we've done it for the last 15 years. Now see time to actually throw that out um, and stop doing it and get a bit more realistic. So it is a really real opportunity for, for change. Um, and we're in the team, we're working on a new theme um, which is going to match the, um, 
the Digital Transformation Office, a DTO, um, their UI kit. So finally, we've got this sort of uh, almost bootstrap idea of for a government website when an agency sitting there burning 10 hours on the discussion of what font should a heading to be. Ah, oh, I tell you. Um, you can now go to the UI kit and, and there's all of these things there. We are baking them into a theme um, for, for the distribution. And with the theme, so why reinvent the wheel? We've got a lot of public themes available on GitHub. There's a link, download them, re review them, modify them, reuse them. Any of them, um, you, you can actually get in, fork it, do your changes. Um, there, there's no restrictions. It is all open source. We saw the Asada site earlier. Um, this was their first design. Here's the Ackley site. Feel a little familiar, OK, where, where we look at the two. One of those straw man arguments that I get about reusing existing themes of tweaks are, oh, but uh, won't people get confused if my site sort of looks like the other site? If your site's content can't differentiate itself from another site, you've actually got bigger issues than it looks similar, OK? So from that, though, we do have an agency white site template. Um, so you can start. Both, both of these were um, built off this. So it's a starting point, and it's only one of many. Um, but as I get to the end, you can still be a unique and beautiful snowflake. Um, so the next few slides, because everybody, remember, but I'm really unique. My site's really special, my informational brochureware, boring website. Um, so here's Stay Smart Online, OK? So they, um, they're actually under the Department of Communications, so you actually see their site looks quite similar to communications.org.gov.au. Uh, um, there's AFSA, the Australian Financial Security Agency Authority. There it is right in the top there. Um, currently in beta, this is live at the moment. They're, about, they're going to cut over in about a month. Um, and the last one, the ATO, this is not a beta site like AFSA is. This is where they test functionality. Um, and it looks like I'm going to be getting a wrap-up real soon. Um, so they, what they do here is put out uh, functionality, get users to test it, and then it gets baked into the proper big ATO website. Um, and so you can see the obvious differences there. It's not You don't have to be a cookie cutter. Um, at, at the theme layer, you can still do what you want. The last bit about how enterprise are we? So I spoke about 3 million page views a month in our SaaS environment. Um, that's across uh, 30 or 40 websites at the moment. Um, that's going to double uh, real soon. But the biggest sites that we have in the GovCMS program uh, is this fellow, australia.gov.au, um, and this guy. Um, so human services. Those two are in the top 10 government websites in Australia and individual. Uh, Individually, they're running probably three, anywhere from three to seven million page views a month on their own, um, and they're sitting in environments that, that haven't blinked. So it's not just for small stuff, it is truly for enterprise uh, level, and, and that's how, how we've built it. Thanks, everybody. Um, oh, I've got a question straight here in the front. Great. Thank you, really important session. Uh, just a couple of really quick questions for you. Uh, coming in from the New Zealand perspective, uh, my understanding is that the NZISM security requirements prevent us from being posted on S3 infrastructure. And is, is it true that GovCMS is totally tied to the Acquia infrastructure? Um, for most of that, I'll have to take that on notice, which means I don't know the full answer. Um, but currently, the GovCMS program, so the program board broadly, where it's supported by the Department of Finance, yes, it, it is on, well, not so much Acquia, but Amazon Web Services. Yeah, we're, we're, we're put forth a solution before our RFPs and the declines, uh, for that exact reason. So, I mean, GovCMS, as far as I'm aware, basically doesn't exist in New Zealand. Um, however, in my conversations with lots of Acquia reps going back years, I've been told there's plans in place for that. Uh, to meet the NZISM requirements. So I was curious to know if you know anything about that. And secondly, uh, before I hand over, what's your plan for D8? I'll plan for D8. <laughs> um, so our, to answer the first part of your question is a quick I don't know. Um, so you can shoot us an email, we can get you a proper answer on that. But let me just say, though, the GovCMS program, we don't think that we, one, have all the answers or actually want to hold on to it. We're actually keen for um, a state in Australia in particular 
to grab up the concept and the idea and go run GovCMS state. Uh, we've offered to mentor, give everything that we have learned through the process, our, what the, our mistakes and our successes. Um, so we don't want to run this thing for absolutely everybody into infinity. Um, so, and similar, if NZ actually wanted to stand up the same idea and if they can't use our system but they want to run it themselves, we'll, we'll tell you what we've done. Um, so yeah, there's no, there's no secrets in it. There's no secret source. Um, and yeah, we're, we're totally open to that. Um, D8, uh, yes, we, we are discussing it. It's on our roadmap. It's coming. I cannot say when. We are flat out. I mean, we've got 105 sites already. We've got 50 agencies on the boil. Um, yeah, it's, it's coming. Uh, so the question is about theming in the SaaS environment. Uh, so the way the super high level um, of how it all hangs together, the themes live out in GitHub. Uh, so you can do anything that you want. So an agency can update a theme in GitHub. And then you come into the Acquia Cloud um, site factory console and you pull the new versions in. When we started GovCMS in the very early days, we did that um, because we didn't trust anybody. Uh, no, we, we just we needed to make sure that people knew what they were doing. As an agency proves themselves that they actually do understand what they're doing and their theme isn't going to pull in some malformed code that then effectively chews up system resources, uh, we hand over keys and, and so agencies can update their, their own themes. Yep. And just quickly, the um, difference between the platform and the service versus just standard Acquia Cloud. Yep. What's the, you probably had that there, what's the key there? Uh, probably the key difference is we've done the security assessment to the infrastructure um, and, and we're happy to share that with an agency, uh, whereas if an agency just went to Acquia Cloud Enterprise directly, completely around and outside us, um, they don't get to leverage that. Um, there's also some smaller light touch things about contract management um, that, that they can also benefit from if they come through us, but that, that's the main thing. Alfred. Yeah, so let's talk about the possibility of being, having agencies being able to tailor their, own, their version of the distribution on the SaaS model. That's on the roadmap. Is that something that you guys are looking to do to avoid them necessarily having to go to a PaaS? Yeah. Uh, so can agencies stand up their own SaaS playground, uh, essentially? Um, it's on our roadmap in so much as we just need a state that wants to do it, um, quite simply. So um, there's so many things that we would love to be able to do uh, within the program itself, but we have one, limited time and, and our own resources. Um, and two, unless somebody actually comes along and says, yeah, I want that really cool functionality, I'm ready to sponsor it and support it, put dev time into it. Um, so it, it all sits there waiting. Um, so, yeah, definitely a state running its, its own SaaS, separate to our SaaS, with their own code base and, and a, their own unique distribution. Um, yeah, no, there's nothing stopping anyone doing it, and, and we want to help. Great. So that looks like it. I hope that was uh, useful for you. Um, the, the last little plug there, the community .govcms in particular um, for non-technical people. So GitHub for all the issues queues and, and you, you can see where the devs hang out um, and, and chat. But if you want to sort of more business end kind of discussions and may, maybe not as deep, deep tech, go to community .govcms. Um, it's, you've got to make an account at the moment to get in. We're actually going to turn that off so anybody can see it. There's for no other reason that that's how it was set up. You can be government, you can be a business, you can be a private citizen. There's, um, it, it's all open, so there's no restrictions to go in there and have a look at it. Uh, you'll see things about roadmap questions, functionality questions um, in there, what we're up to, what we hope to do. So, yeah. Thanks, everyone.